begin. Okay, these are some words that I've written down. Time, adventure, try, treasure, 20, butter, get, and get. You will notice that get is written twice and you will see why in a little bit. Okay, let's take a look at the IPA chart. If you maybe you've seen my other video and you remember, this is the International Phonetic Alphabet. We are talking about the letter T that I write with a capital letter to distinguish it from the sounds which we are talking about here. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is for those of you who are not native speakers of American of, of English in general or American English in particular the T sound this t sound is alveolar what does this mean well it's a sim it's a s easy to explain imagine for a moment that this is a drawing imagine for a moment that I am a good artist and that this is an accurate drawing an accurate depiction of the human mouth kind of a vertical cut an x-ray. This is the nose, this is the upper lip, this is the lower lip, the upper front teeth, the lower front teeth, and there is a little bump right here. Then there are two ridges here. This is the hard palate. This is the rest of the hard palate when it curves up a little. And here in the back, not drawn, should be the soft palate and the uvula and you know the throat and so on. An alveolar sound is articulated with the tongue against this part of the mouth roughly either here on the against the bump or immediately behind it you know in this general area. The T in English is not articulated with the tongue against the teeth as it is in Romance languages. And this is why it sounds slightly different. If you articulate a dental T, it will sound like t. If you articulate an alveolar T, it will sound wetter. You will, you will uh, notice a bit, of, a bit more friction. It will sound more like t, 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 instead of a dental which sounds drier. An alveolar T like the one in English sounds like t, t, t. Okay, so these are, this is an alveolar sound. Let's take a look at our examples here. The first word, time, time, time. Here we have an alveolar T pronounced with a strong aspiration. You can hear a lot of air coming out of the mouth. Time, time, time. It's not just time. It's, it's not just time. It's time. Not time, but time. There's an audible aspiration. A lot of air coming out as your tongue produces the sound. It may sound a little exaggerated the way I'm doing it, but if you listen closely to speakers of English, and this happens in all varieties of, in most varieties of English, in British English too, when the T is at the beginning of a word, it sounds aspirated. Time, 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 talk, etc. So, we have a t sound with a with an audible aspiration. How do we write this in the International Phonetic Alphabet? We write a T and we write a small h on top of it. So it will look like this. This is the t sound. So let me, oops, let me stick this post-it note right here on the side. I don't know if you can see it, but here it is on the top right. I hope you can see it. Either way, uh, 
you know how it looks because I just showed you in front of the camera. Let me stick it on the top. There you go. Okay. Now, what about the word ad what about this word? The word is adventure. 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 As you can see, this is not just but this is actually an affricate sound. This is the sound that we are talking about. And the affricate sound, an affricate sound is a plosive followed by followed immediately by a fricative and both sounds are articulated one immediately after the other and in the same place in the mouth. What's called the place of articulation. So, we have t followed by sh which makes ch the sound usually written with a ch in English. So, adventure. It's the same sound as in the word change, adventure. This is how you write this sound. Ch. Let me stick this post-it note on the top of the screen. Now let's take a look at the words try and treasure. Try, treasure, try, treasure, try, treasure. You have a t followed by a r, by an r sound. What happens here is that you have the t sound but it is slightly Fricativized. There's a little bit of vib there's a little bit of, of of vibration. This is how you write this. Kind of like a T with the sound with the sh symbol small and on on and uh, on the top uh, directly to the right. You don't say try try or treasure or but you don't say try or treasure either like adventure it's kind of in the middle you say try treasure you can list you can hear a little bit of of uh, of, uh, of frication there a little bit of of the tongue you know creating a friction but not a whole lot of it it's not a full ch it's not like adventure, it's try treasure. Then the T sound can disappear. It can be dropped. For example, in the word 20. Remember, we're talking about American English. In the word 20, you don't really say 20, but 20. So here we have, well, nothing. So there is no sound there. You just say 20. Then butter butter this is this is an uh, this is what's called an alveolar tap the tip of your tongue lightly taps this area the alveolar area in the mouth to uh, create a sound this is similar not entirely identical but similar to the r sound in Spanish, for example, in the word pero, which means but. Not to be confused with the word perro, which is a different sound, which is a, a pronounced with a different sound and means dog. So, butter. This happens a lot when the sound is between two, va two vowels. Butter, butter butter instead of butter butter the sound is written like this R, butter D, butter to uh to a spanish speaker this may sound as something between a d although an american d uh, more of an american d d and their own Spanish short R, which is pronounced R. It's quite similar. It sounds D, 
butter. Finally, we are only left with two sounds. You will notice that I've that I wrote get twice. Why? Because there are two ways to pronounce it. One is simply and alveolar without a strong aspiration. So you will say get. The other alternative is get. What happens here? You hear something, you hear the flow of air stopping, but you don't really hear a T. You don't really hear T if you think about it. The first is get with an alveolar T with no aspiration, and the second is get. What happens here is a glottal stop, which is written like this in the International Phonetic Alphabet. What happens here? How is a glottal stop articulated? Try saying the word uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Between ah uh and oh, you will notice a stop in the flow of air if you hear, if you listen. And if you try to focus on what is going on in your throat, you will feel something happen. That is your glottis closing and stopping the flow of air. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. So what happens here? When the T is at the end of a word, for example, in American English, it can be pronounced as an alveolar T with no strong aspiration, t, for example, get, or as a glottal stop, get. The glottal stop, the movement of the glottis, that which stops the flow of air, is accompanied by an alveolar gesture. What does that mean? Your tongue curls up, touches the alveolar area here. Oops, it's uh, covered by the post-it notes, but you get the picture. It's that part of the hard palate, right behind the teeth. And as your tongue does that, your glottis closes, and your tongue never leaves the mouth, ne never is never releases the tension on the hard palate to produce the t. You only touch your palate with your mouth and you don't produce the sound by releasing it by saying t. But you close the flow of air with your glottis and pronoun and, and produce the sound. The sound produced independently is virtually impossible to hear. So I will repeat the word with the glottal stop. Get, 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 get. As you can hear, the flow of air stops suddenly, but you don't hear t. So you can say get or get. This uh, largely depends on the person who is talking, on the situation, whether it's formal, informal, and so on. Uh, as I've noticed, uh, people, when they are being listened to and they think that, that the way they speak is being judged, they tend to pronounce the T very distinctly. So, if you tell people that you're a linguist, trust me, they are going to say, get. Likewise, if you ask them to read something aloud from a text. Otherwise, in regular, everyday speech, People are likely to say, get over here and get me a glass of water, please. Okay, wow. Uh, the, 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 partly, uh, the partly fricativized T just fell to the ground. Okay, now it's uh, firmly on top of the monitor again. In case you can't see those letters well, let me turn the camera up a little. Okay. That's about it. Uh, let's hope I didn't break the 15-minute mark. That's it for the pronunciation of the letter T in American English. Please uh, let me know of any questions or comments. Uh, and if you like this video, well, click on the thumbs up. All right, I will see you guys around.